Hello, my name is Bill Lancaster and welcome again to the Teaching of the Word. I'd like to thank you for joining me. My hope and wish is that the joy of the Holy Spirit, which is heaven itself, will fill you from top to bottom and that the fullness of the Godhead bodily will dwell in you and that you will come to the realization that God not only lives in you, but in every human being and everything that you come across. My hope is that you will be filled with the full measure of His joy and that the death of your bodies will be swallowed up in the victory of His immortal life and His immortal body. I want to start off today by telling you a parable and a story that will help you to understand what God's plan was for his creation. Imagine us and every one of us as human beings as being this mob. We, all of us, fall short of everything that's good. We all not only don't do what is good, but we point out in each other what we don't like in each other because in this way it gives us a peace in that we don't look at our own faults, but kind of as a scapegoat, find fault in others and it makes us feel good about ourselves. And us being this mob not only didn't do what was right, and what was in accordance with God's will and purpose and plan of salvation, but also we didn't help others and expected them to do the very things that we ourselves didn't do. Well, God saw this knowing before we even came into existence by his creating hand that we weren't going to do these things. And he knew that according to the law that he'd given, seeing that he can't lie, that we were deserving of the punishments that the law stated should be given to those who didn't do the law or what was right. So he told his son, I'm going to have to destroy this bunch because not only are they not righteous, but they're filthy before me because of the evil thoughts and deeds they have towards each other and they've come up before me and I cannot allow this existence to go on. Of course the whole time he said this inside in his inner thoughts he knew that it was going to come to this situation that it was going to come to the point when man would need saving. So he told this to his son, and his son said, All right, what needs to be done to take care of this evil done in the earth by this mob of vagabonds? And the father said to his son, Well, there's going to have to be bloodshed, because without the shedding of blood, no one can be justified before me. And they are worthy of death for the acts and deeds which they've done. So the son said to his father, I am pure and without fault. Would it be sufficient for me to shed my blood in order that these may be freed and loose from the bondage of this decay they're in? And the father said, that would suffice. So the son replied to his father, All right, I'll do this act. I will lay down my life for this mob, even though they've done evil, but I'll only do it on this condition, that when I give my life, that it will do it, not in the hope that it will save them, not in the hope that they will be delivered. And also, I won't do it under the condition that they agree that it do it for them. Simply put, I will do it if it will deliver them. 
because no man goes into battle unless he's sure that he can win. So the father said, okay, if you will give that sacrifice, that will blot out for this mob everything that they did against me. But when that happens, what's going to keep them from doing it again and continuing in this state of existence? And the son replied, what you need to do is raise me from the dead. And then when you raise me, raise me into these beings, into this mob, and I will transform their nature and put an end to the one in them by destroying it with fire of my very being, the one who has done the evil against you. And the father said, that's a very good idea. So he sent his son into the world and he died for the unrighteous and sinner and he raised into the world and raised into the being of all men and all creation and delivered them. This is the covenant that I said I would do with you, says the Lord God Almighty, that I would send the Holy One into you and that he would cleanse you and purge you and give you a new life and a new being. Stand up. Raise up in me and have new life, says the Lord, for I'm going to accomplish in you what I wrote from the beginning of time, that I would bring a son into you who would purchase you with his own blood and who would lift you into the highest heaven. So sit beside me and rest and be seated in me in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And know that I, the Lord, will establish you. I will give you the highest rank in heaven, the rank of the Son of God, the kingly priesthood that only I give, the kingly state of being that I will lead you in and cause you to flow as a river. For the hand of the Lord turns the rivers of water wheresoever he will. And this is the word from the Lord. The Son of Man, my many-membered Christ, the fulfillment of the type that Jesus was, must suffer many things and be rejected and be spit on. And the elders will turn him away. And he will be killed. And on the third day, he will rise again from the dead. This is the covenant and type that I set forth in Jesus and that I have done in a body of people in the world, that they would suffer at the hand of my people and would be raised to a new consciousness by the saving grace of Christ Jesus himself, being born again into a new life and through the suffering that they suffer, may pour out the grace and abundant life into those who cause the suffering for them, that I would send a deliverer and that Zion, the parched place, would be made whole. Raise up and lift up your hands and wait on me, says the Lord, for my people have been perfected. My saints have been given the keys to the kingdom and my word has been established in them. Look not and trust not in your own doings and lean not in your own understanding, but get wisdom. Psalm 105.20 The king sent and loosed him, my many-membered people, even the rulers of the peoples, and let him go free. He made Joseph Lord of his house, the son of my right hand, and ruler of all his substance. To bind his princes at pleasure and teach his elders wisdom. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. 
There the Lord greatly increased his people and made them stronger than their oppressors. He turned the hearts of the Egyptians to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron whom he had chosen. They showed his signs and wonders among them, wonders and miracles in the land of Ham and Egypt. He sent thick darkness and made the land dark and they rebelled not against his word. He turned Egypt's waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land brought forth frogs in abundance even in the chambers of their kings. He spoke and there came swarms of beetles and flies and mosquitoes and lice in all their borders. He gave them hail for rain and lightning like flaming fire in their land. He smote their vines also in their fig trees and broke the isolating trees of their borders. He spoke and the locusts came and the grasshoppers that were without number. They ate up all the vegetation in their land and devoured the fruit of their ground. He also smote their firstborn in their land the beginning and chief substance of their labors. He brought Israel forth with silver and gold, and there was not a feeble person among their tribes. Let it be spoken that the Israel of my people, the inner Christ, I will bring forth with joy like silver and gold of the deity of redemption. But all the curses that are written in this book shall come upon the firstborn son of Egypt, the flesh nature that hates, that binds and holds my people. Let my people go, says the Lord God Almighty, the I am of Israel, the firstborn from among the dead. Let all those who bind my people be put to death. Let every thought be brought into captivity that thinks not love and kindness toward their neighbor. Let anyone who loves not the Lord Jesus be accursed. The curse that was to come upon the nature of carnality in every one of us. This is the covenant I made and this is a promise that no firstborn child and no firstborn animal shall remain alive that is from Egypt, the place of straightness, the place of bondage. And this is the place that I said would never find rest in me. The abomination that causes the desolation of my people that was spoken of by Daniel the prophet, when you see this happen, stand in the holy place of my son in you. The abomination that causes desolation will pass over and I will destroy him, says the Lord God. Enter in, enter in my people. Look, your salvation draws nigh. The kindness and the hope of the Holy One of Israel is shown forth as the Son of God, manifesting himself in the Holy Ones of Israel. See my saints, 10,000 of them coming with him to execute judgment, to show my people that love will rain down, that I will cause new breath and new life to come into my people. Open up, open up my people. Listen, open your hearts. This is the word that I said would draw an eye to you. Listen and hope, rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is the reward of heaven that is within you. My kingdom is in you. My son is in you. Sit up and be seated with me at the right hand of God. Listen, and I will give you the words of my covenant. Look, and I will show you the clouds of my glory. Taste the sweetness of the manna that came down from heaven. Not the manna that I gave your forefathers in the wilderness, 
when they tempted me and tried me, but the manna of my son. Look and taste and listen and feel the kingdom of God as it enters into you. This is the kingdom that I said would come. The kingdom of love and happiness that is in my spirit, says the Lord. Listen not to your own thoughts, to the prophets who prophesy lies, to the prophets who say, where is the promise of his coming? Where is the promise that the Lord would cause us to love? He's slack. He will not do what he said in the book of the law. All the prophets were liars. No, don't listen to these, the inward thoughts of flesh, but listen to the inner man of your spirit, says the Lord, for I live and dwell in each one of you. Hope, hope in me, and the love of the Almighty Spirit will come into you and join with you. I was angry with you, Israel, but I will forgive you. The fire of my wrath was kindled against you, but I will turn it away. The burden of my law was on you, but I will lift it. The hopelessness of your nature grated against me, but I will change it. The fastings and works that you did before me didn't live up to my expectations, but I'll give you a new work and I'll put within you a new heart, says the Lord, a fleshy heart, and I'll take away the stone heart that I've given you, and I will establish love inside of you. I was angry with you. In the wilderness when you tempted me, I thought to destroy you. But when I see the bow that I set in the clouds, the multicolored spirit of my anointed one in the earth, I will turn away my wrath and not destroy you. And I was angry with you. But when I see my elect in the world who do the covenant that I will perform in them, then I will not destroy you. And I will turn away my wrath from among you. And though I slay the firstborn of Egypt, the firstborn in you that did not do the works of the Lord, but was the enemy of God, I will establish the firstborn of Israel in you who does the work of the Lord and I will give to you the showbread of my tabernacle. You will enter into the holy place, the holy of holies, and I will establish a priesthood before you for the inner part of your being is my holy of holies, says the Lord. And I will not forfeit you. I will redeem you like silver is redeemed or gold. I will try you and I will purify you. And all the dross that is inside of you will raise to the top. And I'll wipe it off. And I'll cause you to be pure gold, says the Lord. The streets of gold that I said heaven would be paved with each one of you clear as crystal. And I was angry with you, but my wrath is turned away when you did not my commandments and you tempted me and tried me with a party spirit. No, I will take away this spirit from you and I'll put a new spirit in you, says the Lord God, a spirit of love, a testimony to the righteousness that's in you. This is my judgment. Did I not say the saints would judge the world? Did I not say that my people would judge the earth? This is the judgment, that the righteousness of Aaron and Moses, my elect, the light bringers, the drawn out ones, will cause a new word to be brought forth in the world and the world will be changed into the glory of God from the glory of shameful man. Shame will be taken away from my people. 
and I will lift up the banner of righteousness and I will sound forth the horn of salvation and no longer will men trust in chariots or trust in horses but their trust will be in me says the Lord so rejoice and let the kindness and goodness that's in you pour forth out of you This is a trustworthy saying and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. You see, we're all sinners and we've all fallen short. God does not look at all of us as sinners, the inside of us, but he sees a sinner in every one of us and the righteous one in every one of us. That's why the argument that says that one person is worse than the other won't go. Because you see, that argument can't fly with the realization that all people have Christ living within them and that all people have unrighteousness in them. It puts us all in the same boat. So Christ enters into us which fulfills the scripture that says, Awake, sleeper, asleep in the mind, and arise to newness of life, and Christ will give you life. The newness of life is the Christ living in our mind and in our soul and in our body that we might love the Lord God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength, and all our mind. The heart being the father who marries the woman, the soul, who in her strength produces a new mind, which is Christ in you. So this hope in which our souls are fixed is like an anchor that keeps us steadfast in him. The truth of godliness in Christ Jesus is manifested to the whole world. And I've been made a preacher and an apostle and a teacher, not to teach my own will, but to teach the will of the one who sent me, that those who hear may attain to the fullness of the Son of God, and that those who can't hear might purify them into the new life so that they in turn might purify them and bring them into the Christ consciousness. I'd like to end today's teaching with reading out of 2 Corinthians 1st chapter. We're going to start with verse 2 and this is going to show us the purpose that we all have in Christ Jesus. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of sympathy, pity, and mercy, and the God who is the source of every comfort, encouragement, and consolation, who comforts, consoles, and encourages us in every trouble, calamity, and affliction, so that we may also be able to comfort console and encourage those who are in every kind of trouble and distress with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For just as Christ's own sufferings fall to our lot, just as they overflow upon us, his disciples, and we in share and experience them, so through Christ comfort, consolation, and encouragement is also shared abundantly by us. You see, the reason we love others is because he first loved us. The comfort that I have from him living in me pours out of me into others no matter what they do. Because the thing in them that I don't like is the same thing in myself I don't like. 
And the comfort that I have says to me that I too am like them and that I still have things in me that are unseemly to him. So therefore, I forgive him because I myself have been forgiven of God. The love of the Lord Jesus pours out through us like portals from heaven, like windows of heaven that rain down upon the earth. I'll see you next time. I'd like to tell you again that feel free to record any one of these shows. I think it'd be good for you to listen to them to absorb the word that's living in you. For it's by your faith that you'll be made whole. The leaning of your personality entrusted to you by God that you might lean on him and not on your own self. And my prayer is that the saints of God may be refreshed. That the refreshing spirit of God will refresh others through you to their comfort, consolation, and joy. I'll see you next time.